welcome to where the furniture isn't always the best, but them views, they are amazing. 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 But the views are amazing. I am your host, Coach K, this week, and I am here with, uh, you know, three the hard way. So we'll start out with you, BJ. What's going on, sir? I'm good, man. Despite all the weather, we're drying out down here in South Florida, so we'll be good. Yeah, man. You guys still getting rain now? Uh, it was raining a little while earlier, um, but I was out back down in Miami Gardens area. All that water subsided, but there's still a whole bunch of areas around here that still flooded. Mm. Wow. Wow. Well, that, the year mark over here is like 17.8 inches total. Mm. And I think we got the most in the entire city. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yep, that's the one thing I don't miss about South Florida. All the flooding. All the flooding. Yes, sir. Phase on. What's good, sir? Sounds good. People who are normal scare me. <laughs> there should be no one normal in this world right now. Uh, but I am, you know, I am at that weird stage where I'm happy, but I know there's more to be done and the road just started. But I'm a little relieved. A lot of that pressure kind of fell off um, on Saturday. So it's been a good week thus far. Um, but I'm good. You know what? A after we talk about the crazies, we're going to come back to that, about that that being happy, but you know there's more to be done. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah, man. El Fresh Dente. Wow, what is happening, world? Um, you know, another beautiful day in Zamunda, checking out things going on in our um, election. It's been very interesting watching the pace of things. Other than that, you know, I took on a new client, one of our uh, past guests, uh, Pat D's, uh, and his uh, blank canvas cooking. So we've been doing some things and actually had the opportunity while the storm essentially kind of was going on on Monday, drove down to um, Pinecrest area, and we had a, a, a small catering event there, took some beautiful photos. But uh, I got to say, it was actually one of the easiest rides I've had in probably the majority of my life down to Miami. Like it was pretty much nobody on the road and uh, the weather wasn't really bad at all. The best travel I've ever done is during a hurricane. Facts. Always, always easy. No one out there. <laughs> most people don't realize too that they um, shut down the tolls. And so yeah. that even is, is a, a bigger bonus. It makes it even better. Makes it even better. So for, for you guys that are in Florida, and I know you were talking about a little bit, BJ, but okay, so the storm came through. Is, is it supposed to come back? Like I know it went back out into the Gulf. and No, it's about to hit north of Tampa. They're preparing tonight. I just got word, like my team is up, like Central Florida, whatever, like all the districts around Tampa, yes. Hillsborough, Pinellas, Lake, um, going over to Orange, Polk County. Mm -hmm. All that was closed tomorrow. They got storm warnings right now. So it's going back up through just north of Tampa up toward Jacksonville. So about three quarters of the state is, is getting hit with the storm over a week period of time. Wow. Wow. I think it might wow. Be one of the first times, because what it did is it came came through from Mexico area. It did a little circle around on top of uh, more like the um, <clears throat> west east. coast of Florida. Yeah. And, um, you know, the east side kind of got some of them bands, and then it danced back into the Gulf, and now it's coming back across more the north. Uh, west side of the state all the way across so like like you said tampa orlando area i think jacksonville is going to get a taste too. <clears throat> you can see it starting to form if you actually go um yeah i use like storm watch or something like that but you can see the fever bands slapping like right uh one two o'clock in the morning over here on the west coast uh fort myers area we'll start getting some rain when it went back out in the gulf it's it increased to a category one it was just a tropical storm when it hit Russian. us yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it went over there and hit that warm water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. that warm water. But, you know, speaking of crazy things that happen, so, you know, uh, allegedly and hopefully we have a we have a new president, you know, President-elect yeah. Biden. Yeah. So it was crazy to watch that finally come through because I felt like everybody was just, it seemed like for like three days it was Groundhog Day. Oh every day. <laughs> I don't know how many times I listened to that man on CNN. Um, Wolf Blitzer? Yes. Blitzer and the other guy who's at the map. I can't think of his name right oh, now. Yeah, oh, he was, yeah, working, that he was dude working, was working that man. That, <laughs> that man said that the man. same thing, I don't know how many different ways, for like three days straight. I'm but like, three days straight. Break. Just take a and, break. And, what and, is and, it, 150, 256 to 213 for like for two days nonstop, just, <laughs> just sat there? And, and Wolf... Just kept saying, we're expecting an update. <laughs> and 200 more votes. Any moment now when we come back. <laughs> and it was just like, okay. Uh, but it was crazy, man. So what do you guys think? How you guys feel? Um, I don't know if anybody's seen the uh, Van um, snippet yep. that I put up. Van Jones? But, yeah, the yeah. Van Jones snippet that I put up. But it pretty much paints the the way this guy is trying to to figure out a way to rob his way to stay in office. And mm -hmm. ultimately, I just think it's um, <laughs> interesting and scary to watch play out because this is precisely what this guy does as far as get things tangled up in litigation and figure out the slippy, slimy way to just like, yo, well, we'll be in litigation for three years and uh, I'll still just sit here and do what I want to. So that's been the, the, the most interesting thing in, in doing a lot of watching of their side and seeing mm -hmm. what they are talking about and how they are trying to paint this narrative of, oh yeah, there's fraudulent votes, but they're not really fraudulent votes, but there's, there's potential for it, so we should look. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, an interesting dance and, and, and yeah, it's just interesting. Oh. Once they once the states that are questioned, or most of the states, once they certify it, nothing more you can do. Once it's been no, certified, that's that's not true, and that's why I was asking how many watch that. Um, right. I thought, yeah. Van, I thought I was, I, no, Van laid out pretty much a play of what's going on now. Where after now, once all votes are are fully counted, then it can pretty much go into a place where, like, almost like the Senate. Mm -hmm. is is the ones who votes and decides who's going to become president and pretty much uh um a self-attained group of them are the ones who get to choose so literally they can choose only all republicans the new, they know who are going to and literally the the voting process the 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 um, popular vote process goes out of play it, it means nothing and literally literally on the hands of those people in the house are sitting i can't remember what exactly the full details were but it pretty much laid out a plan that sounds like and stuff like that also to me is always like damn if they weren't thinking about it before i'm sure somebody on their team that watch this video now this right, like, thanks, right. Man. Hmm, exactly. Eureka, this is what we're gonna do that exactly. just, the way that they laid it out was very um it was very trump like and it was definitely one of those plays where it's like wow you're just watching but also watching um the other guy who said today, Lily, yeah, we're going to um, oh, second, the second to the, the process second. into a uh, into a second Trump uh, term, and it's just like, wow, you can just you can really that. say that well, right now. Like, well, <laughs> well, and here's the thing: so the other part of the van, the Van Jones, um, you know, piece was he said that a lot of people don't realize it, but the sitting president saying, hey, I. I concede, you know, my, my, my campaign that like, we think that's just something that happens as just, okay. They, you know, that's just what they did, whatever. That's actually something that is a required step yes. in order to start oh. uh, giving access to the other, oh, to yeah. the other levels of government and for them to start preparing for the incoming president. Mm -hmm. So until he concedes, n none of that stuff is moving. Yep. There's yeah, no, the, um, um, the DOJ, I think, or yeah, was um told her no, like told straight was like no, you can't come yeah. here. Yeah, that that we're like, not sorry. we're not sharing no information. They're not giving them, and and that's the thing is the um, 
and they made a. Uh, He's removed two top officials as well over there. Yeah, they said that uh, they correlated with um, at nine eleven when um, Bush was actually coming to office. There was a delay for him, which they kind of said led to the ability to have nine eleven in some instincts because he didn't get some information at the time mm-hmm. that he should have. You know, back then weren't able to compare intel. Yeah. But Biden, Biden didn't rest here. Um, press conference today, I think, or maybe yesterday, he was like, yeah, you know, there are things that they're going to have, but even if they did give me those uh, those files or information, I, I'm not the president. I can't make a response anyway. So more of be just to know. So I'm still going to move forward with all the plans I have in place. And then when time comes, I'll, I'll read it then. He said, but I can't make any decisions. So hey. if I had the files in my hand, it would matter. But I didn't well, drop the mic when he said that uh, I've already been talking to leaders across the world. And you right. know they're all happy, just like, you know, <laughs> they're, they're happy America's back, baby, you know. <laughs> they said we're going to go ahead and, and drink some beers, have some steins. Mm-hmm. That's, that's funny. Um, this is interesting, man. It's interesting to watch. Uh, it's interesting to see. I think we all got built up for something major happening immediately right and it's almost strategic on their part where it seems like there's a little bit of a, of a delay and i sent you guys a video earlier about the the maga million this march weekend. that's happening this weekend and that's interesting like to listen to the language and that of mm-hmm. hey we're already in contact with truckers there's gonna be a huge strike we're gonna shut down dc we're gonna go in there and and uh one thing I always notice is the very um, divisive language that, that, like, they are very good at continuously putting in these messages that are extremely strong in controlling the narrative and especially in controlling the feeble-minded who are just, like, they know the key little boop. They say just things that are, you're just like, really? Like, this is what you're saying? I saw... Um, um, a white girl was put out of her, her parents put her out the house. I think her mom was like in her seventies, dad in like the eighties or something, but she like did a whole little TikTok through where like initially they were trying to, um, go with her to or get her to come with them to the polls and like, you know, mentioning the importance of voting because I think she told her, told them that she wasn't going to vote. Um, but they were very adamant Trump supporters. And when she brought up talking about, she might do Biden. They were like, oh, you know, um, the language they were using, they said, we're going to become um, peasants. We will become peasants. Biden is going to make us peasants and slaves. And something else that I was just like, really? This is the message that you guys are receiving? And then, so then she goes to the polls without, uh, she went on her own and they like followed her there. She goes in, she votes for Biden, comes out, tells them, moms ran like, she just told her she stabbed somebody or like she told her that she was pregnant by a black guy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, know, moms took off running. You've disappointed me so much. They got back to the house. Moms came upstairs like, yo, give me your keys, get your stuff, get out, yo, get wow. out. And that's, that's the polarization, the par- par- polarization that, uh, that he's done to, to that base. Like their Republican party is now no longer, it's, even now, I said there's a quote that um, Republican, just by my name or by my party, not actual Republican, if you vote go against him, you're like, you're not really a true Republican. So, like, the fear monger, this is the way it's going to be. Is, it will be a rough while. even has him still being able to have um, people in these high positions still allowing this narrative that there's was potentially, you know, enough fraud that swayed the actual uh, election to, mm-hmm. to keep on painting these false narratives is because they're all scared of, he already said, if I have, if I, if I lose to Biden, that he's coming back in 2024, or even that his son is gonna, gonna run. And so it's always <laughs> about that play of, they are scared just on what he's able to do. Cause at the end of the day, he's able to get the, that his group riled up and, and yeah. ready to move and just like Kay said I'm very interested to see what this weekend will bring and what that mobility is going to turn into because it was a, a huge moment of kind of seeing like yo when they when they actually make this official is there going to be 
what is going to be that gunshot that is going to go off. But that's we haven't seen, seen, that's awesome. we've seen a mm-hmm. bunch of, you know. Even, even in that video with them saying Biden is going to be easy. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. When they said that Biden is going to be easy. Yes. I don't, yes. I don't, I don't know what that that's means. An interesting, right? That's an, that's an interesting, interesting statement. And, and even like, so one of my sister-in-law sent me that video and I'm just like, okay, first of all, how do you even get this? Like, what, where that, that, it, that was another, I'm like, where is, where is this getting posted there's a, at? There's a couple right. different things and that's why I went to jump in there. So there's, again, the divide is there. There's a couple of things that you hit on right there. The first, where they got a lot of it from is again, again, I, I'm not on it, but apparently I was hearing about there's a, because social media is um, censoring things that are going out now a lot more. So there's another platform that everybody all of a sudden had the word has gone out for everybody to go, their Trump supporters go on this platform. And the platform normally has, I think Gina was telling me like 200 something thousand downloads. They had like over a million in a, in a, the first day or whatever they started uh-huh. promoting or whatever. So it's almost like another network where it is uncensored, which is already in itself a bad place to be because you have un- unfiltered, uncensored information going out there that that it is spreading a lot like always before. But part of it also is that when you look at the Republican Party as a whole, to have him to think about how quiet the entire party was the night of them um, announcing Saturday when they announced it. Um, not even the VP, his own family, his own thing were reaching stuff. Dude, but- where is Mike Pence? You ain't heard enough from him. You ain't heard enough from the top <laughs> Republican people. You heard from Giuliani. Giuliani. You're, you're from Mitch. Mitch. You're from Mitch. You're Lindsay. Mitch, Lindsay, but, Giuliani. Right. So them three. But you take them three out the equa- equation. Where's everybody else? So the the interesting is gonna be let 2024 roll around, right? When you think about the next thing, if the Republican Party is smart, they uh, they're understanding the era of their ways now and who they bring up next is going to be somebody totally different. Right. But that independent ticket right now is going to be the strongest thing we've ever seen because they're, they're not going to do that again. They're not going to put that man back on a ticket and be in the same, to possibly be in the same position they are now, but that independent ticket is probably going to be the strongest thing we've ever seen from an independent Uh candidate since Ross Perot. And Ross Perot didn't really stand a chance, but he had a strong base. Yeah, he did. And I yeah, can't yeah. remember. What, I don't even remember what year that was. Now, yeah, I do remember Ross Perot. I don't remember either, but I think that was the year that that was the last That's year first. that Clinton that Clinton took Georgia. Mm-hmm. The Democrats took Georgia. Yeah, that was that's that same year. Um, but again, I. I like you, you just you just had a loss for words that this is even happening, and yeah. and we're just and we're just in this physical filibuster mm-hmm. of what's gonna happen next. So I I think well I I know what is gonna happen next. I I know I'm gonna make sure that I switch to uh, voting in Georgia so I can vote in the Senate runoff. Yeah, right. I believe it um, because I think that's gonna be super important. And we if need everybody think about it. to listen this in Georgia to make sure mm-hmm. that you don't sit this this next um, runoff out in January. Request your bat, your Epstein ballot now. You can get it right now. You can get it right now. Um, and I think the last day to register to vote to be in that election in January is December third. I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Go out there and vote. Go go out there and register. Do what you got to do if you live in Georgia. Uh, and and you want to participate because otherwise, if they get control of the Senate again, we're going to be in the same situation as when Barack Obama was president. All they're going to do is just shut everything down. Everything he tries to push through, they're going to just shut it down. So here's the thing. If you look at, I went back and looked at a couple of the races, Maine being one of them, the state of Maine. Um, So there was... And Maine is is one of the two states that split up their electoral vote, right? They have three votes. Um, yeah, they have three. One went Democratic, two went um, Trump. So when we, when you look at that and how they they that and that's the for like the House rep and all the stuff when they have everybody there. But when you look at how they um, voted, right? 
So like the outskirts of the ring and one of them that went um, Biden, and you look at the entire state, the majority population of the state voted for Biden because that was in the district of the outside ring they have there. But if you look at their um, Senate race, those people voted for Biden, <laughs> but they're saying they didn't vote for the senator as well. They still vote that and that Democratic senator there lost by a huge margin. That means people were voting for that presidential ticket, but they're still voting Republican for that Senate race. That's they, so thing. people are not being, people are being smart how they vote. They understand the presidential versus that Senate, and they understand the power the Senate has as well when you come into those Senate seats. The last time I saw it was 48-48 seal. So those two in Georgia, and I forget where the other ones uncontested right now are at. Alaska. Is it Alaska? Mm-hmm. Okay. Last one. There's three of them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna be off because it has to be. No, you're right. It's 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 it's, it's forty forty so forty. Three. There should be four out there still. I think we have the all here was three. That Unless, was... I mean, I saw numbers going back and forth. The last number I saw was forty eight forty eight. So you got the two in Georgia, one in Alaska at least. And if there's one other one out there, oh no, yeah, they they did get Alaska. So so they got fifty right now. The, oh, yeah, they were saying Alaska yeah. would be there. They were saying that was going to be um, almost guaranteed, okay. un, uncontested runoff over there. Okay. So when you think about it, it's like Georgia is is the chance Georgia, to Georgia's it. To do. Yeah. Yep. So Georgia's the battleground. So let me ask y'all this question because here's something that I'm feeling. Like, Art, this goes back to what you were saying that you're happy, but you know that there's more to do. Mm-hmm. Do you guys get the feeling that that more to do transcends all this politics that's going on. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because for, for me, it's funny what that whole little lull last week of, of what's going to happen, it made me just think about just my personal life, like not even talking about politics. And it made me just sit there and feel like, man, we're in this space. And I feel like I just have this shared feeling of, okay, there's more that we need to do. Look, um, I think one of the things that has pulled me to working with Pat was in listening to him tell his story on the podcast about what got him into wanting to be a chef and the thought of what would you do if you won the lotto? And that was his, you know, yeah, I go to, to culinary school and I really learned how to cook. Why do, why do I need to wait for the lotto? Let me go ahead and do it now was mm-hmm. like one of those moments. And just like you're saying last week, it was an opportunity to feel that energy because there was the, um, the, 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 the speech of, you know, there's a potential for another civil war that's going to just emerge out of this election. So there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of, well, what up? And thinking about, well, if, if things go haywire, what's really going on? Which just like you said, it could kind of put you in that space of, well, is is what what I'm thinking about uh, um, that I have now? What is truly important and what is really you know necessary and what really do I want to do? Like, is this really what I want to be the end all be all or that spot? And so it definitely has been an um, interesting week. You know, I, I didn't think about it that way. That maybe the anxiety is driving that, or just the things that you feel like you wish you could do in that moment. So for me, it was like, man, you know what? I always said I wanted to buy a Hummer H1 surplus and just fix this joker up just enough to when I got to get on the road when it's that time, I don't have to get out of anybody's way. You better get out of my way. Um, Dude, get out of my ride. head. So, <laughs> What'd you say? Get out of my head. <laughs> That's how they've been looking for them for like the last two years. Oh, for the last two years? And, and listen, like I, I know how to get them. We just need an engine. Mm. And, and and the problem is and the problem is you'll have it and you'll never get a title you'll never get a title for it so you can't legally register it on the road if you get it surplus gotcha so you just gotta wait until it's time to you just gotta wait it until doesn't it's matter time until it's Armageddon <laughs> right I'm not worried about getting pulled over <laughs> but it, 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 I mean between that trying to think about okay if I need to protect my family do I have what I need to to get that done going out and trying to find stuff and can't find it. And then now having to, to think, okay, what would be the next step? And, and then I think for me, it was just a, it was just a ripple effect. Like, all right, how are we at this point? 
what what what's the point that that I wanted to be at? And it's interesting. I was just wondering if it was just me or if there are more people out there having this same thought of, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? That's funny. Uh, what's next? I, I know I need to be more involved in the future outcome of this country, right? I know what I need to do there. I know we need to lay the foundation for our kids, for them to understand their responsibility. But then it's also, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> How do we get out of this situation where these elections don't even affect us? Right. Because there's a certain number of people out there. It, yeah. These elections don't affect them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who's president, right? In some cases, whoever's running is hoping that they will endorse them. <laughs> So how do we get to that point? That's and 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 I I think we're talking about a different type of happiness, right? You referenced Pat and what he talked about. If you won the the, the lottery, what would you go out there and do? And I think we've asked that question on the podcast before. Like what 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 would we do? And I don't know. It just makes this. You just sit there and you think about it, and then I wonder, obviously. Hey, is this the the stupor that the media wants us to be in? Or is this a higher level of consciousness for us? And this is, remember, you know, a year or two ago, we were looking for the next evolution of the human being. Like, what would that be? And is this part of that? Like, I remember they're saying that there'd be more con a more conscientious wave. And is this part of that conscientious wave? I believe so in the sense of I feel like it is a really red pill, blue pill moment because as as much as, as I have a hatred and distaste for Trump, I also have a um like a belief of how much anything is possible. I literally was sitting there today and thinking like, man, like five, six years ago, like this would not had like there was no way anyone could have told me hey trump's gonna be president and like be like on the verge of getting a second term and like like no you're like there's no way i would have thought that was truly possible and it's like sitting here in where we're at what's going on it's just like i just look at everything as anything's possible man you can you can do if you truly want to do something and, and, and want to have that true grit of attempt, you can make mountains move if, if that's truly what you want. And I think that visibility and understanding is coming through now. And even um, with Kamala becoming the first female, like that is also bringing extra layers of, you know, possibility and understanding and leveling the playing field that I feel like these, this moment, this time is going to be a huge um, reference point in human evolution and, and, and something that is noted back on, like, remember in this area, because not only that, just how, how we're dealing with COVID and the separation of people who know and understand what it is and are just like, look, I'm not, I'm not here to play science scientists in the sense of like, look, I know people are dying. I know people who, who said they've had it and, and said it wasn't feel it, feeling good. I know I don't want it. So let's just wear a mask and get over with it. And I was literally thinking today that it's funny in a sense, the mind trick of the people, the anti-maskers say that they're trying to control you by making you put a mask on. But in a sense, I feel like the anti-maskers are really trying to control you by telling you not to do it. Because right. it's like, look, we're not telling you to wear a mask in your house. We're just saying if you guys are all going to be around each other, it makes more sense to wear a mask. Okay. And they're like, no, we shouldn't wear a mask anywhere. We should be able to get wherever we want to sick. And it's just. We have rights. Yeah. And, and right. it's, it, it, this is like slavery. They they compare it to the 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 um that one picture of slaves where the, he's got that real like Bane looking contraption on his face. And you're just like, man, get out of here. Right. But right. it's it's. It, there's so many layers because it's also the um the 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 seeing 
in uh, watching people's definition of what racism is and whether or not it's still prevalent in here in our society and then the layers of what um, minorities deserve in way of, you know, leveling the playing field. And so watching that play out, seeing that, hey, even um, as it stands, you know, most white males are like, F y'all black people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like point blank period, it doesn't affect me. I really don't, th I don't have a, a strong taste for y'all anyway. Y'all can kiss my butt. You know, I'm more concerned about my money, far more than I am concerned about your feelings or whatever you got. To but say it wasn't just me. money, though. Hmm. It wasn't just money. Some of these places that were like this deep red, like there's no money there. But, no. but yeah. it's all. But it's the it, lack of it's racism fear, and it's fear and power. Yeah, and and that's the thing is that. They are again. Remember, I told you when they talked about uh, when I talked about the girls. She said that they're they are scared they're going to become peasants, and that's yeah. a narrative they're paying, painting in these these other places that that continued um, speech of we're about to the the majority is going to become the minority, and we're going to end. Which is always funny because it's like you guys swear you guys treat us so so the same and everything's so great for us, but you're very scared to become you know labeled as us which is, uh -huh. is always an interesting game that they play. But then also just that complex of where, where are we going? Like what, what, what is, what is, what is all of this to, 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 to state, you know what I mean? That, yo, know, all of this racism that we're seeing unfold and how people are, are just straddling this fence. It's, um, it's just eye opening. It's, it's good times to be in again, to see, and be able to start um, doing easy things like deleting people off of Facebook or you know what I mean? Right. Because you start to really see people's real views and sometimes you can have those dialogues, but I, I prefer in being able to kind of draw that line in the sand with that understanding of like, look, no, there's no separation of when I see your su support in, in, speech of love for Trump, all I feel is racist, 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 racist. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm, a, I'm excited in just to see drive by through Atlanta and, and seeing the signs that I knew were there on uh, Monday, they're gone now. A lot of, a lot of, the, um, a lot of those, those Trump signs and things are gone. You're seeing, it all, you're seeing the um, uh, Purdue signs now and Kelly Lawford signs in, in place of them. But you see a lot of those signs like, fine. Those are the ones who, who understand and see that, listen, they voted, we lost, it's over. I mean, there are still the stragglers that won't, won't let it go. But, you know, it's just great to see that. You see, literally, you can go walk through downtown Buckhead now and just see, like, complete That's change. That's scared of, though, the people who don't, who are still the, trying to. Hold on, thing. yeah. It's, they're, they're few. They're, 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 they're far from few where I, where I commute and see. I know there's more up in the other parts of Georgia where it's more deep red, um, but in this area, you're starting to see less and less. You see more and more of the, uh, the blue Biden Harris and all the other groups uh, up there. So, yep. Go ahead, BJ. So did any of y'all catch the David Chappelle piece? Yeah. Uh, oh, Saturday Night Live. Goodness. Yes. I saw a lot. Okay, so anybody who didn't needs to go back and watch that piece. There's a whole lot of gold he dropped. And that 15, 16 minute um, monologue oh. he did. But the the thing that, go back to him as well, if you didn't catch the, my next guest is the David Letterman special with him. I was just gonna say that too. That, that one, one, yeah. that one also Netflix. is another. The mind of Dave Chappelle, like to be in his mind time and just to hear where he's coming from is like, like it, it's exactly a comfort oh. to hear that peaceful, but, um, revolutionary yet peaceful type approach to stuff and, and that that those two don't go together but when you listen to him speak i'm hoping you'll you'll understand what i'm saying um but when it comes to the thing some of the things he said that makes you think and when you reflect on everything that's happening right now people are scared people are scared to lose power they're scared, scared to lose money and the thing about it is one of the the best things he said is um and many people have said this since then but when you think about it no matter who won that night, there's going to be a large constituency that is like, we lost. Mm -hmm. Now, 
if the tables were turned, the reactions from um, Democrat versus Republican supporters of whichever candidate, I feel that it's going to be it was going to be reciprocated no matter what. And again, I can argue with people or not, but I think had it gone the other way, there would still be lawsuits out there. There'd still be this going on, whatever. Would we say that everybody's just going to consent and say, hey, we lost and move on with it? I doubt it, right? My personal belief. But when we think about what we have to do to move on, yes, we still got a lot of divide. Yes, we still have financial disparities. Yes, we have job ceilings that have to be broken across all barriers, women, minorities, whatever the case may be. But when people fear losing power, they're willing to do anything. And that power, and I say that because it's a false sense of power, though, and it's that majority-minority piece that Ian was just talking about, that because we're the majority in numbers, that somehow protects me, that somehow saves me. Um, instead of looking at everybody like we all need to support each other. Because again, at the end of the day, one thing I did appreciate about Biden's speech that night was the fact that yes, I ran on a Democratic ticket, but now we I'm I'm an American president. Right. We have not had that for four years. Nope. We have not had an American president. We've had From a day one. A, we a had a party based president, but I can't even say that. We had a self centered president who would play the party in his favor to accomplish whatever he wanted to accomplish. That's so the biggest I thing. I feel sorry for a lot of people who fell into that power trip of I'm, I'm being protected, I'm going to do this. That's not what the intent was. That not, that's not what the goal was from day one. And again, where we're at right now was planned out strategically that if it, the election did not go that way, here's how we're going to do it, and here's the things we can help put in place to, to hold the, the transition off. And that's unfortunately what is gonna what's gonna happen have to happen is that a lot of our youth today that are gonna be able to vote in the next election. Again, I go back to the statement I made last week. Like my son, like and everybody else who's his age and older who haven't voted yet this time, that huge gra demographic right there, mm -hmm. they need to be educated on every single thing and not get it one sided for the next four years. Yeah. Like, I really believe you know, no matter what media you listen to for the last four years, it still was one sided. We we were bombarded with and and Carol, you Carol, you brought it up a couple probably about a couple months ago now when you started talking about um what we see based on our social media. Like mm -hmm. what I and I never thought about that before. And that made me really, really think about what my kids are being exposed to, what they're seeing, even on something like TikTok and stuff like that what they see with I never thought about it at that level. And it made me really think about, okay, we really have to educate overall a non um party based nonpartisan is a word I'm looking for, sorry. Yeah. A nonpartisan approach to just what are the facts. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's how people need to be educated. And I'm sorry to say, but just like they, they talked about in the Civil War, families are gonna be torn apart. Like you told that story mm -hmm. earlier. Like when people realize if I have the data in front of me, the facts in front of me, I have to think for my own and make a decision from on my own and let my vote cat fall wherever it may. Yep. Well, That's what's gonna have to change in the next four years. Well, it's it's we've seen it start to take place with things like a fact checker for um, yeah, presidential right, debates amazing. where it's like, we've never had to worry about that type of spewing of just direct lies over and over again without you know any care or or you know regard for what what he's saying and that's the thing that is the scariest to me is even with you know there are um now many sources that provide that by parts look we're just going to fact check literally put out the the, the yeah. lay it lay it down this is what it is you know he said xyz and this is really what it is and mm -hmm. people are still getting this information yet still are like no i still want him to be the leader right you know, this is how he operates that's what is the scariest to me the the bulk um of those type of people who can see that type of leadership and be like yes that's what i want to teach people is the way to be a leader but the good thing is in a lot of the, um, there's like these mock polls and things that they do with the younger generation where it's it's not, um, they're not pulling the tape over their eyes. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they see and understand and do not, 
do not like Trump because he's an a-hole and, and can't see. And I'm like, that's not something that you hide. And it's very easy for them to see also the, the same things that are showing the fact checking where it's like, look, I can understand if you're very passionate about whatever you do, but if you're just spewing lies, like what's the, what's, what's the point? What is the point? So let me ask you guys a question before we wrap this thing up. What do we do now with the people that we had to block on social media, that we had to just cut ties with on social media, the people that made it very clear in, in your office space or your, your social group spaces? What do we do with those people now? How do, we, how do we move forward to be one America, if you will, even though we've never been part of the one, but what, what happens? Cause we got people that, we got people that look like us that, yeah. you know, fall into that category. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time for them to, to, I, to come back. They got to realize and see their, their ways. And it's going to be some minutes. Uh, nothing we can do, nothing you, I, or Amos that's on the side saying, Hey, here are the facts. Here's the truth you can say, because the minds are made up and until they can see it for themselves, um, we have to wait. Um, so I don't, I don't see anyone being unblocked immediately now that it's over. It's going to be a process of, of going in and then eventually, you know, talking one-on-one, -on -one, not on Facebook, but a phone call, a text call, something that kind of understands the process for it. Uh, what can you do to heal? Just continue to continue to speak the truth and state facts and, and, and be on the side of, of, of positivity, not even right or wrong, just a positive way of staying your message. Um, but it's going to be a minute. I, this four years is not gonna not gonna change most of their minds. It's gonna be the next next president that's gonna make some things change. Um, so I'm thinking 2024 is when you'll see a real change. Because um, we know Biden is a transition president. He wants to do four years. He's not gonna do all eight. He just can't. Um, so however he lays his next, I'll say three and a half years. The first half is gonna be a wash. The next three and a half years out, it's gonna determine how fast we can move forward and you know become one versus being a purge? Um, to me, one, I, I'm, I'm honestly, like we, we have a, a guy in our circle who has been heavy on that uh, campaign. And let me tell you, it's hard for me to just let him continue look, to be look, a degree in the circle. Like, I just want to like, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Boot that little degree honestly, out of the circle. I have, I have, um, I have muted him on, on all my social media, so I don't see him no more just because I couldn't take it. And I won't lie. I knew it was bad because when I saw that his birthday rolled around, I didn't even wish him a happy birthday. I won't even lie. Like, that's how bad that the, and it was just like this past week that his birthday was. But I couldn't. I could, like, it has been very, and I, I see little snippets because he'll try to post into my group, but I'm just like, man, I cannot do it. Like, you are just on another role but however again back to the point i um i have no um uh, my focus is more on us and and how do we get the things that we need than caring about um them understanding and seeing the light and it's kind of uh my analogy is it's like um a homeboy who has a girlfriend that you know cheated on him you kind of told him and he don't want to hear it and he's more you know nah this my lady this and the other and you know all of a sudden they go off and have their relationship y'all talk no more and xyz and you can't but then later on hopefully you know maybe he finds out that yo she wasn't as as good for him as as he thought she was and so then you know you'll have that moment of like yo eh, eh, eh. <laughs> all right and you know maybe it'll come back but overall it's like yo some of the times you you charge those friends to the game it happens sometimes they get married have kids and you you only see about them maybe on social media and 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 mm -hmm. probably never ever again you know what i mean or it's a 10 15 20 year down the line and they're just like hey man you was right but i was in my my thing and you know i was low to because obviously to me trump has some type of amazing um, something man what yeah, is that, that, that because i i am i am i i tell you all the time i am i am honestly amazed in um i am in awe of his ability to do what he does by mm. way of just like i can say and do what i want to like the fact that he is right now playing golf 
during right? not only not only the craziest election we've ever had in history, but also we are doing this while COVID. We literally just had the most cases and the most deaths ever in <laughs> within this COVID period. And this guy is playing golf. Like it is fascinating to me. And there are still people who are rallying this weekend to come and support him. That it is, it is. It is fascinating, but it is also scary because it is Hitler-esque. It is exactly the type of stuff that Hitler was able to do, where it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we just want to wipe them all off the face of the planet. Uh, okay, yeah. No, this is not <laughs> This is not cool. Like, what is okay. going on? Right. It's crazy. BJ, what your thoughts are? What are your thoughts? What your thoughts are? Go ahead and <laughs> quote that one. What your thoughts are? T-shirt. This is a tough one for me because I've honestly not blocked a single person this entire time. And and I, I say that because of information, right? We, we talked about things people are saying, wanting, to, I, I want to know what people are saying and how they're saying it and actually fact checking and having conversation with people. Again, until you do something, um, I'll, and again, my approach may not be until you say something directly to me or about about something I posted or said. I'm not gonna die. I don't need to do dialogue with you, um, but I haven't blocked anybody. And I say that to say, we have to. No matter what what side you fall on, we have to be willing to talk. Um, because if we're not willing to talk, we might everybody might, might as well just strap up now and be ready in the next week when they make the call and go at it, right? Because if that's like any any divided country, any, any people, any groups that are divided right now, you have to be willing to talk and, and see. I'm not saying understand. I'm talking about see what the, the fascination is, try to get inside and understand. Like I saw somebody that I used to work with post something today about how much they love Trump and now this, and like, I'm reading this, reading the post and see, but there's nothing substantial there. It's just, I love this man. I think he's great for the country, but like, but why? What, what is the evidence? What is your thing? I, I need to understand those type of things. And yet I haven't had anybody the same thing outside of anything financial, right? The only thing I've seen anybody post was, or con- uh, have a conversation with was about finances, right? And if that's your biggest thing, God bless you if that's your biggest worry. Um, I, I, again, I don't have that luxury. It is not about having the money, it's about really, I have other things to worry about um, the color of my skin and, and driving down the street or walking in my neighborhood. I have bigger things to worry about of, of going down and just making sure that thinking about how my kids are going to be treated in the next three or four years because of the election results that happened a week ago. The circles they run in, the people that all of a sudden you saw flags and stuff on that Saturday. Until then, you didn't see nothing around here. And all of a sudden, everybody had flags on cars and stuff. Like they were going out of the neighborhood for a rally and stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it's good to know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to hide them. Again, we talked about the individual, like in our, in our circle. And I'm just, I just, I watched part of it the other day. I'm just looking like, I can't, right now I can't say anything to this man. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like eventually somebody's going to need to have a conversation. And I don't think nobody else right now wants to. Um, no, and look, um, I am because he, but he's the agitator though, so that's the same, yeah. Thing. But that's a and 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 look, I am, I am, you guys have all seen, I, I, a, I enjoy dialogue, I enjoy debating. <laughs> you do, I you have waste too much zero. time, people, waste yeah, much time. Thank you. I, I have <laughs> on numerous occasions, especially because I was, um, my high school was mostly white people. Mm-hmm. That I've, you know, I have a lot of white associates, especially from that time period, who it's always funny that you see how much um, leeway, you know, they, they feel they have in order to make assumptions about my character, what I approve of, or this, that, and the other. And I've had to uh, let some of them people, you know, look, know through a block and, and post dialogue of, hey, look, no, I'm not the one, but. I'm willing to listen because I do have a strong desire to have a better understanding of how do you come to these assumptions and where your your thought process is. But then it's like, again, back to our guy, when I listen to him and I go in there to try to, because, yo, that's my dude, like, that's my guy. But I listen and I'm just like, you're not my guy. Like, who are yeah, you? But it's also, I know he is 
like you said, he's an he's doing it partially to agitate. Like he wants to be a shock jock in it, and and so it's like, damn, how much of this is shock jock, and how much of this is you're really like on it? But either way, it's just like I can't, I can't get on this train, man. I can't. What about you? Invasion of the body snatchers. <laughs> That's what it feels like, though. That's what it feels like, because I, I mean, I do remember that process. I remember the slow change, but then it was just one day, just gone, just <laughs> like harsh, aggressive. Yeah. And mm-hmm. look, man, I, I think, I think the brother listens to our podcast, so it'll be interesting to see if we get some response and comments. And yeah, um, talk look, to what, us if you what, do. Talk to us. Yeah. Offline. Offline. Oh, Just he's going call. To, he's going to try to be on here and, <laughs> and it will be a very... Um, I can show all comments. So I if something's good, I had to, I had to tell him get posted. chill on our live event. He was going crazy in the comments. <laughs> yeah, me too. Crawl, that it's just like, what do you, why? Why? But it's he... Yeah, he and it was just, during my session too. Yeah, and I was just yeah. like... Oh, I called him up. I was like, can you stop? <sighs> Come on. Okay. Yeah, okay. He was just I can't even say anything. I know something's happening, but I can't even get involved. <laughs> Yeah, that is, um, bro. Something listen, is happening. Man. Hey, man, I don't even, I don't even know. You already know how I feel because I just be confused. So be, before, before I say how I feel, man, let me, let me let you guys get your stuff in. Um, Arts Corner, what you got, man? What do I have this week? You know, this week like I said there's. I'm gonna pull my inner Jesse Jackson out. Biden has won. But the work is not done. We got a lot to do, people. We got to make sure that, you know, locally, it's all local. There's sheriff that were just changed over. There's police officers that you got to go in there. And if you're in your community, if you want to see change in a police office, go there and apply and become one officer to actually, you know, help your community and be a face people know and see. Um, You know, I kind of always admire the firefighters um, because they've always been, in the middle, like firefighters, you, you go there, no one ever fears them, worries them, they're very liked in the community. Even if there's issues, you don't see that um, in the firefighter community, which is kind of strange, um, but a good way. So go out there, look and see how you can help. This is not over. This, this You gave all your energy it's November the 3rd. You put it all out there, you gave it all. And then now you get your Gatorade or your Powerade, depending on your level of income, and you go out there and you, <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you go out there and you work. Get back to work and make it happen because it's not over yet. <laughs> that was that was your Jesse Jackson. Like I didn't I didn't get any Jesse in any of no, that. You didn't get any that. There was just, a rhyme. It's just that, that initial rhyme. rhyme. He, he did the rhyme. rhyme in the beginning. The rhyme. Oh, you did the rhyme in the beginning. The rhyme in the beginning. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> that, that's right. about that's about as pro- prophetic as the if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. Oh my God! I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Cochran. Cochran. Johnny Cochran. Cochran. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Johnny Cochran. Bless his soul. In heaven. Facts. Wherever he may be. Fresh. Hit us with that fresh ovation, man. Um. <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, this is another shirt that I wanted to make. Um. Uh. I'm down. What has is and will. So all that has. Um, is and will happen. I'm cool. But anyway, going into this week's preservation, uh, my fears of tomorrow are simply melting away. I am at peace with all that has happened, is happening, and will happen. I am willing to act and face my fears. I am liberating myself from fear, judgment, and doubt. I am the architect of my life. I build its foundation and choose its contents. My ability to conquer my challenges is limitless. My potential to succeed is infinite. I love myself. Again, we are constantly talking about all the craziness that, um, especially dealing with this election, dealing with 45 that is going on. Um, But ultimately, you have to be able to still continue moving you, moving your circle, and continuing to progress. You got to be good with whatever the outcome is. However crazy this thing turns out, there is still a very, um, I won't say very strong, but there is a possibility he can do something crazy and still wind up in office 
we at the end of the day do not know because there are so many crazy things we have already witnessed that we swore were not going to happen. At the end of the day, we need to be all good and kosher with what, what has, what will, and what is. So take that to the bank. This fresh foundation for this week, none other than the freshest. With that, time is in the classic, y'all. Believe that. Yes, sir. Yes, why sir. Did, okay. Why did I just feel like that? I felt like the the uh, the lady that was behind Trump at the Fox at the um the last debate where she was just mm -hmm. in the background the whole time. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're talking just. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you at this time, whatever platform that you are listening to, uh, tell at least two friends that they can yep. listen on the same platform uh, and let them know, uh, share, share, share the podcast, um, share your thoughts. We want to see your comments. Um, just listening, really, we appreciate it. Um, that doesn't get us anything, though. We need to hear uh, your, your, your reviews and your comments. So please if we your platform that you listen to allows you to do a review or leave a comment, please do so uh, as we would greatly appreciate it. So when I think about where, we go, where, where we're gonna go from here and, and, and how we navigate from this space, and I have no factual information that I have gathered on what I'm about to say next, but I just feel in my time on this earth, this is what I see. Anytime, that we change presidents, the incoming president always deals with a problem in the economy. And the reason that, that happens is because anytime you change presidents, consumer confidence drops down as they wait to see what's going to happen as a result of us having a new administration. I say that because what we're going to go through for the next 90 to 120 days is going to be tough. And what I want people to realize is when Trump got elected, there was another thing that was launched. And now that, that, that his presidency is about to be over, this is going to be over too. And something new is going to happen. And if you pay attention to social media, you will see that this word has gone down. It was trending through the majority of Trump's time and it's going down now. And I think I know what the new word is going to be and what the new thing is going to be in social media, on the news and wherever you get it. And when I say it, everybody's gonna have an aha moment. If you go back four years ago, all of a sudden the word influencer came out and was huge and everybody was pushing it and everybody wanted to be an influencer because we had the king of the influencer in the pre as, as the president of this country. And if you think about the things that this man has been able to do, there has not been an influencer like him in a long time. But the time of the influencer is over and the time of the creator is now all of a sudden here. And what does that mean for you? That means that for you as a person, you have to create the environment that you want to thrive in. You have to create that thing for your family that no matter what is going on outside of the home, you've created that safe space for them. You have created that space where they can make this life whatever they want it to be. You don't have to sit there and wait on a civil war you don't have to sit there and wait on somebody to give you a job. You can create it. We said that many times throughout this episode. And if you didn't catch it, you need to go back, right? Because all I'm doing is I'm just connecting all the dots. I'm just weaving the thread that binds every single comment, every viewpoint that the fellows had. It was all about the arrival of the creator, right? And some of you think the creator is God and you've been referring to God as the creator for a long time, not realizing that you too are a creator and you can create this environment for yourself. So I challenge you to go out there and figure out how do you transition from the influencer, which the media, the news, everything was involved in that got you to the point in the state that you're at right now, but that's over. How do you now switch to being a creator? That is your challenge. That is the question. 
if you can be a creator, then your next four years is going to be amazing. Your next eight years could be amazing. You just got to take advantage of the opportunity. Don't get left out because I'm telling you that is the new title, creator. That's our show this week, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you for joining us here on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. We will catch you next week. B. Jones, we miss you, man. See you soon. Yes, sir. That like button, baby. Hit that like button. Amazing. 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 Amazing.